Good morning, everybody. It's uh, quite too early for all of us. Uh, welcome. Our topic today is I am going on a tour how to make it work. We have now four amazing artists and business people here. Uh, Kasper is missing. And uh, I think that's kind of like part of the deal and part of the touring as well. There's always somebody missing. Hopefully we will get him to the panel later on, but we'll see. We are trying to reach him now. Uh, I'm Virpi and I'm uh, head of full steam management and I also do my main work is work as a manager as well. I've been doing it for 15 years, but I've also been working mainly or basically on all sides of the music business during my career. And uh, I think we should start like a little bit of introduction of you guys. Let's start with Andreas. Is it on? It is on. Uh, yeah, my name is Andreas and I'm from Denmark and play in the band Get Your Gun. And I'm not playing this year, but uh, I played in 2012 and 14. Uh, yeah, and, and been co actually coming back here for the last three years. Maybe we played like more than eight shows in Estonia, uh, part of our touring. Uh, so I'm actually glad to be here now because that's why, that's the reason why I, I got the ticket here so I could contribute to this because I really wanted to go, yeah, to this festival. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Timo and I play in a band called KXP. We come from uh, Helsinki, Finland and we've been playing like uh, maybe touring since 2011. Released uh, three or four albums, depends how you're counting. Hello, I'm Sandra from Estonia, from Tradetec, and um, we are playing with Tradetec third year here. We started, our first concert was in Tallinn Music Week two years ago. We only had five songs. Luckily, the showcase was 25 minutes. <laughs> and this year, we already played two showcases, and today we have two more. Hi, I'm Tuomo from uh, a band called Mokoma, a Finnish metal band. And uh, I play guitar in that, and then uh, I also run our own record label called Sakara Records. Been running for 13 years now, so uh, I kind of have a twin twin role, I guess. Here we tour mainly in Finland with the band, but uh, then we also have like international or bands who want to do an international career in our label. So I'm kind of uh, at least financing their international tours. So I guess that's why I'm here. But I would actually like to start with you, Tuomo. <coughs> Uh, sitting in a two chairs, being in a band and also handling the business side of it, does it have any conflicts? Is it good for for the business and band or like any good and bad sides of it? Well, of course both. Uh, well, you have to be a little bit schizophrenic person to, uh, to do this twin role. Uh, Oh yeah, well, it's good to have the freedom, of course. I can, I can run the, the business the way I want, and uh, of course I enjoy that, but uh, well, there, with the freedom there's also the responsibility, so it's, it might get quite stressful at times when you're also responsible for the, all the numbers and all that, and uh, also you would have to play the gig as well. Well, uh, I think the worst, worst uh, example of that was when we did like a, like a record label tour a few maybe 10 years ago, like seven, it's only seven gig tour all around Finland and uh, then all the financial risk was ours. And uh, when the tour started, I looked at the Excel, like, okay, minus 75,000 euros. At this point, looking at the ticket sales and then, uh, okay, it's time to go on stage and start, yeah, come on. And that was kind of a most difficult spot to uh, combine these two. But it went well, the tour, in the end, but it was quite stressful. <coughs> Um, most of you also Tuomo doing some international touring, but but you guys all tour internationally. And um, how easy or hard it is nowadays to tour internationally and start building your career and um, and your band. How my heart is. How hard or how easy hard it, it is. is. Okay. Um, well, it it takes time. 
it's it's always like uh, you're always building something, you know, uh, and you go back uh, again, and you you know you, every time you you go to a new country, you have you kind of have to start basically all over again in a way. Uh, but I enjoy it. Yeah, the the fight. It's a uh, yeah, but but touring is yeah, it's hard, you know. But do you have any issues? What are the biggest issues of touring internationally, Timo and Sandra? Well, um, I'd say uh, the obvious ones, maybe. For KXP, I would say that um, I like to use cor like a real examples. We have like uh, seven uh, festival dates now coming over the summer outside Finland. It's like uh, one of or two of or three of like short or long weekends type of things. And uh, I'm uh, banking the flight tickets. So it really always feels very comfortable to confirm the shows. But then uh, you end up uh, realizing that you have to buy seven trips worth of flight tickets for five people. That is our crew. So it ends up like seven times. 1,000 euros or seven times uh, 1,300 or something, you suddenly you have like uh, uh, 10,000 euros you need to take from somewhere and put into something and wait for the fees to come. So I would say that thing is, uh, is challenging. Is it always the financial side? What is the worst of touring? And like, like Tuomo said, that's the most stressful thing. And for you, it's the hardest issue. Is it always the finances? I think uh, many bands make the tour really hard for themselves because they get really fucked up. And they think that it's because of the music, but they just get fucked up on a, on a tour. And, you know, that kind of gets mixed with the big picture in a way. How do you feel, Sandra, about the financial side? Uh, I have to say, for me, there is nothing hard on touring. <laughs> The challenge is uh, to think uh, what and where you want to play and uh, wha how to enter the market, how to go there. We just did a, a small tour in uh, Germany, uh, very small places. Uh, it was really nice, uh, but then um, there's not so many people coming because nobody knows you. So the, the better way would be just to go through the festivals in the start, what we are aiming for. And about the finan financial things, um, uh, it's uh, for me everything is so uh, challenging. How to get the to get the money, get the support. We in Estonia we have very good system. You can ask from the government and uh, then cultural ministry and then other associations as well. And uh, if I have already planned, if they don't give any more, then I will go and find some sponsors. <laughs> so I wouldn't say it's uh, hard for us to find the support because we are working really hard and I think uh, also like the ministers, they see it, so they also want to support it. So we have a good situation in, es in Estonia with that. Yeah, I think we have pretty much the same in Finland too, which is yeah, just we are yourself. Spoiled. You, you have to work really hard so they see that you really want to go, not that you, you just want the flight money, and but you have to have a plan. Why do you go to that market? And, and then you find actually the support. Of course. Uh, I want to ask you specifically that how does it feel to be a, f a woman on the road? <laughs> it's... I don't know if... Are you the only woman in the call group? Uh, our agent is also a woman. Oh, wow. But how does it feel to be on the road as a, as a woman? I, I actually don't uh, see much... Uh, difference or we have been uh, friends already 15 years so it's a different thing and actually um, uh, I'm also engaged one of, with one of the guys <laughs> so it's easy last time we went on tour in October we are four piece three band members and one uh, sound engineer and uh, uh, we are a couple there and two other guys just uh, one day before the tour broke up with their girlfriends so that was interesting <laughs> and then you are in the bus for one month <laughs> But it's uh, nothing, uh, it's, n it's not hard. I'm in charge of the, uh, everything, but I always uh, delegate and say what they can do and uh, should do, and they help, so it's good. They do the packing. 
They do renting the bus, but I don't know. Yeah, I remember once talking with Maya Iverson from The Sounds, and she's been on tour like for past almost 20 years, I would say. And she said that it would be nice to have one day on the road that you are not one of the guys. That you would actually have your own room where to change your clothes and like do your female stuff and like getting pretty and everything. And I just started to think about it, like that it's, I, I think it's a little bit different for a woman to be on the road, actually. I don't know. I was, um, when, when um, we were touring with Annie, like 2001 to 2008, so um, I was seeing that pretty close, like, because she was on a very high, you know, like a pop level, um, where you take lots of photographs and you need to get your hair done and stuff like that. So. It was lots of lots of work, I'd say. You know, all the costumes and 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 that kind of shit. Uh, I'm not like, uh, yeah, it's hard work. But there's also a lot of guys doing costumes and makeup and hair and like everything. So there's no difference. <laughs> but talking about showcases, that's something I want to ask all of you. We are now at Tallinn Music Week, which is also one of the showcase events. Um, how do you see showcases? Is it worth it? How do you rep prepare for it, and uh, what's the outcome? Do you want to start, Tuomo? Well, uh, if you want to get anywhere, you have to do things. I think just being active and playing all the gigs that feel anyhow kind of uh, pleasant to do, you, sh you should do them. You never know who's going to pop up in the audience, and, uh, and you fight the right one from there. It might, might happen, and it, we, we haven't done that many of these, but... Uh, Every time there's been something or someone and uh, good things have happened. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, I would recommend. Uh, definitely two showcases. Uh, we started with it and uh, within two years I think we have done five big showcases in uh, in States, in Russia, in uh, now in January in Eurosonic. And we are back in Tallinn Music Week third time and this time we really challenged ourselves to do four showcases. But the thing is that you have to know uh, and you have to work to get delegates. There's no point, I think, there's no point just to go and play there. And, uh, and <coughs> of course, it's fun to play for the local big people always. But uh, you have to invite people and you have to know what you want uh, the outcome to be from that uh, showcase. I think that's that's the another challenge. Do you want a record label or you want tours or whatever? And then, of course, we uh, also prepare for it. We did uh, this year. We all went to the hairdresser. <laughs> Last year, we practiced even in the sound check. We were still playing the song really hard. <laughs> but it comes with the experience. Um, uh, what you talk, how you build up the showcase, and so on, so on. It's kind of a hard uh, format to do <coughs> 20 minutes, for example. Much easier is yeah. to one hour concert. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you went to the hairdresser before the showcase? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. I, I took a perm and a uh, little bit of uh, grey stripes. But I, I, I have to completely agree. I, I've been doing quite a few showcases and um, and I, I think the, the result is always um, the best if you, for example, in our case, I'm not going to go into mentioning what showcases are good or what showcases are bad. What I'm just saying is that like, uh, we had one showcase where our booking agent uh, was uh, gathering uh, festival uh, promoters and bringing them to our show. And we played a really good show. So from that one single showcase thing, I think we got like five European festival shows confirmed. And then you can play three showcases and there's like not a single uh, thing happening and I also think our band is kind of alienating for some people because it's really hard and dark and that kind of stuff so I think maybe people are afraid of coming and asking directly <laughs> <laughs> that is silly but it might be the case I don't know yeah I agree with the fact that you know you never really know who's standing there you know uh, I remember the first time we played in telling music week the first city stage we were playing was uh, in in the heart of Vito Keskus, the yeah uh, uh, yeah that was something 
Yes, that was something. But but then there was like guys from uh, one guy from Mojo magazine, and he was really into it. So you know, that's like also a bit of cliche. But no show is you know is not important, and you never really know what you get out of it. Also, I remember we played at Waves of Vienna at this. This sounds like we only play really shitty stages on festivals. We don't. But uh, this Red Bull uh, fire wagon it was really weird. Uh, really bad sound, actually. But still, there was some people who got, you know, you can still get the message across. And yeah. Yeah. And also, I think, as you said, it's very different to play showcase festivals because you really have to get going in the first song. Uh, and that's it's a whole different ball game, you know. Yeah. If I can add, um, I think uh, it's very important to invest on uh, on the product of your band and and on a showcase and basically everywhere that you have like that it looks good and sounds good. I think we kind of devoted to the visual and uh, sound aspect also of the of the that that the product itself. If you want to turn on. Uh, talk on this kind of capitalistic, horrible terms. The product <laughs> is very strong. <laughs> but talking about uh, financing the showcases, how do you do it with your act? Like, it's obviously, it's an investment, mm. and it's something you must do. But how do you do it? Like, do you have your label or your management or somebody behind it, or do you do private shows to finance it? Like, what is your story? Well, yeah. Uh, from you know, when we came home in December for, for uh, like more or less one and a half year on touring, we didn't actually see any money ourselves. That's also a thing. It's like you know, we haven't had, you know, we always put it in the in the band box so you, you can pay stuff. Uh, that's also a very important note. We haven't really seen any money ourselves uh, yet, but. Uh, there's, uh, and then of course funding. In Denmark we also have a lot, as you t told you have here, where you can, different organizations where you get money and, and that's a big help, yeah. But of course, you you know, sometimes you have to pay for those plane tickets and you're not even sure you're getting funded until yeah. you get home yeah, again. And the funding can come or it doesn't come <clears> and it <throat> anyway comes like uh, six months later. So, so it will kind of uh, contribute into the future rather than of course it will pay also old bills but i always try to look into the future and put like you know yeah, invest into the future and that's how we do it that if we get a good fee from somewhere we we uh, take a little bit and then we buy flight tickets with the rest of it that is by far the biggest like in expense in in our operation traveling expensive, yeah, flight yeah. tickets uh, well, the van rentals are quite cheap nowadays. Backline is cheap, hotels are cheap, but the flight tickets, it's the, it's the biggest lump. Uh, yeah, we also do with the funding. And uh, uh, now uh, uh, we, um, uh, I write uh, applications and I try to think uh, longer term, so for the half of the year. Uh, all, all the trips and all the travels I put together, showcase festivals, everything, and then uh, so we would have the money also in advance to, bl to buy the tickets. Uh, yeah, well, our situation is good in a way that our bands are really popular in Finland, so we sell a lot of tickets and sell a lot of records, so uh, we fund it like that. <laughs> Bye. But uh, yeah, so. But, but are you all basically funding the showcases yourself? There's no label, there's no management, no, there's no one else, no other organization behind you. We're, we're really lucky to have a good manager who, who doesn't mind putting his, I don't know, but his I, life on stake <laughs> sometimes. I, I, I kind of agree, but I kind of disagree that if you. If you're more hands on into the finances, I think you, you will. Because there's been like. In, in also in KXP and and but especially with Annie's case there was like several managers and 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 uh, and I think the it's easier to contain the cash flow because you kind of control both ends what is coming in and what is going out so if there's just anybody who has the interest of doing it of course I would love to have a manager but it's it's just been like. Uh, yeah, it's been it's difficult. Having a manager can be very different, you know. It can yeah, be like yeah, a, yeah. 
a friend who's part of the band and always been, and it yeah. can be like a guy who's, you know, taking more money. Well, let me ask you all, um, when you tour internationally and you do international career, is a manager a must for you? Do you really need a manager to do it? On the tour or like preparing the tour? I mean, overall, like, if you do international career, do you need a manager? Is it a must for your career? Well, uh, I, yeah, I would say because a lot of the times we try to really, yeah, you know, put down our costs with touring by just going free people. The free people are playing and we're the only one who's going and driving and, you know. So having a guy at home who also helped preparing stuff and if something is like, because cars will stop working and... and and shit will happen, uh, and you know someone who's who's not having their head in the whole situation. You know they can they can call people and help out. I, I think it's I've, yeah, we uh, we enjoy it immensely. Um, I, I I think it this way that that you have these aspects of like music business. Like you have like you have management, you have record label, you have booking agent, and you have publishing. Basically, there's four, four, but I would leave kind of the publishing out of it, this this part. So I would say that it's the le record level, management and booking agent. So from these three, you have to have at least one that is really active and loves your band. And in our case, why we haven't had a manager yet, we have a really active and really kicking our ass a booking agent in England that is really pushing us. So I think all bands need this kind of Push, yeah, yeah. and 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 uh, in this, in our world, we necessarily don't need a manager because the booking agent is almost like managing us. He's like update your web page. He's like do this, do that, and do this. And I'm, I do everything. He says because I want to keep him also motivated. I think it's always an exchange of of like because nobody's doing the work for you in the end anyway. The artist has to do the work. Yeah, the point you, yeah. Hello. Uh, the, I think it depends if you're a band uh, or artist, if you're uh, strong and you have a vision, what you want to do, where you want to go, then uh, you don't uh, need a manager, but you need an agent, a booking agent. And uh, what we did also, uh, we uh, we know what we want, <laughs> where to go. We have uh, even uh, very um, uh, not realistic plans. And uh, then uh, we have a great agent who books us. And uh, now there is a next level that she needs uh, also another agents in the different markets to work with. So she's now doing our uh, little bit the managing business as well. But all the all the other thing that we do in Estonia, we do ourselves. For example, Estonia is so small. I don't think you need a manager here if you know what uh, if you know what to want, you want to do. But if you have a music and you don't have much experience I do, and you don't know really what is the next step to do then it's good to have some uh, advisor. But I think, uh, for example, uh, nothing bad <laughs> about Estonia, but I think bands are kind of uh, desperate uh, to have managers, to have somebody whose name is manager, uh, even though they don't, they don't know what to do, but then uh, they think it's um, now the great success will come. Mm. But the truth is that the band has to do everything themselves at the end of the day. Yeah, I think it really depends depends on the band and on the artists. Like uh, very often, in, especially in bands, when there are more people in the group, there is one who's kind of the manager type of band member. Doesn't play very well, but very good at managing things. So he yeah, can, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm one, I'm that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm I'm that in our band, and uh, and yes, I pretty much manage our band, and also as a record label guy, I manage many of our other artists as well. But but I feel that there there has to be someone doing the managing work, whether it's a, like someone from full steam management or whether it's someone from the record label. I, I don't know, but there has to be someone who kind of looks at the the whole thing and. Uh, yeah, this know. is I completely agree with this. But our experiences with the managers has been so that the the manager in a way always floats into this kind of category of making all the daily stuff that I think 
I can do myself. I can buy the flights myself. I can do all these kind of th things myself. I want manager to think like the big picture and be even that I'm like uh, kind of a really like a hippie guy, you know, but I'm still kind of thinking of the business side of the things. But I want the manager to be above me mm. on the business level. And I never found this kind of person who is, who is, I don't want anybody to buy my flight tickets. I don't want anybody to do this. I can do this all myself. I want somebody who is thinking big, 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 big for, for my band. And this I haven't found. They all end up buying my flight tickets and doing the <laughs> daily, unnecessary daily stuff. That is, that is just, I, I don't want anybody to be doing that kind of like uh, assistant stuff. Well, for me it's all... I want the boss. <laughs> For me, it's also like, because we have a special situation where our manager is also our record label guy and our, um, our how do you say, head booker. And then we have like all different countries, we have different bookers and distribution and promotion and stuff like that. But we work really close together. But the thing that, I always say that he's a part of the, you know, he is a part of the band, a crucial part of the band. But the thing that really differs, as you say, is that he, he can take on the business mask before I can, because you know when you play music you're also emotionally invested in it and sometimes you have a hard time seeing well for me I you know to see the the big picture before you know some time goes and and he can be more like uh, an asshole you know and you know in a way and that's good to have a nice asshole yeah. well let's go back to touring there's two sayings uh, about touring one is called after tour blues and the other one is called No Sleep Till Hammersmith. Uh, do you agree with this? Is there after tour blues? Is there no sleep till Hammersmith? I mean, I definitely believe in the after tour blues and I, I think it comes like uh, from the very simple and Spartan um, lifestyle of touring. And, and everything is very simple on tour and then when you get back to the real world, it's kind of like there's too many like things changing and you have to take care of this and that and you know I I personally always get depressed and really I I don't like reality. I think real life is reality. <laughs> Touring is the perfect escape from like uh, you know hanging out alone on a gas station in the middle of the night you don't know where you are you know it's beautiful truck drivers you know abstract man-made landscapes, you know, it's, 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 it's so cool. But I'm, when you come home, you're just like, you're meaningless. But it's, it's also, when you're, when you're, that's true. Yeah, Monday can, like, Monday when you come home is the worst. But it's, uh, for me, it's like, on, yeah, on tour, you just have a purpose all the time. You know, you're always like, I have to get up, and I have to drive for maybe four hours now, and I know that I have to do that every day. And then when you come home, and you know, it's, it's like that every day, you drive, you get there, you say hello to people, you make the sound check, you eat, you wait, you play, you pack it all together, in the van, maybe sleep, drive again, and that's just how it goes. Uh, then that can, that may, might sound uh, like really not a nice life, but it really is, I think. Uh, but when you come home, it's like, yeah, there's all these things that just grew, you know. Like a garden that needs gardening. Yeah. Gardening is nice. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I don't. I start to feel myself as a really happy person because I don't have these things. <laughs> uh, not after the tour. I like uh, coming uh, home and do the stuff here and uh, and build up uh, a next thing and next tour and have. Uh, uh, all the time some ideas to do and uh, as well as being on the tour I uh, sleep quite a lot because there is uh, quite much time there I feel but I can sleep everywhere I last time we came from uh, Germany I fell asleep before the flight took off and then uh, they were waking me up because the, actually the flight didn't take off we had to go off the plane <laughs> and change the plane but I already slept so I yeah I think the hardest part is to actually when you go on the tour to keep on 
doing, every, like to keep on uh, living a normal life. So we do quite, we are a healthy band. We go take our jogging clothes, we go run in the mornings and, uh, and just uh, keep on practicing and uh, making songs and so on to keep it uh, as a part of your life. Not like now I packed, I go on tour, I stop everything and then come back and continue. So to have this uh, uh, touring as a part of uh, normal everyday life. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I think you said it all already. I think one one colleague al always had like one extra day after a tour, like just being alone in hotel for one day, just kind of adjust back to yeah, the normal life. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, it's a, it's a very yeah, good idea. It's terrible to get from the bus and straight home and uh, you know, face that that violently all that normal life. So uh, yeah, actually, I, I also know a guy. I used to work with him. He lives in Stockholm, and he always had a hotel right next to Arlanda Airport. <laughs> and he told home always that the tour actually ends a day later than it did. <laughs> and he always stayed also that one night, just sleeping and relaxing and like adjusting like a normal life that you actually have to go and, and order your dinner yourself and, and do that kind of stuff. And also, one friend of mine who was touring in the States for 18 months in a row, they were opening for Nickelback in the States, and the tour was 18 months. And they were touring arenas for 18 months in a row. And he said that when you... For Nickelback. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sorry. No. But he said that when he actually came home, the whole reality of life kind of like, had lost he has he had lost like everything that he he said that he was basically sitting in home for a day and waiting for the catering and then he realized like late in the evening that there's not going to be any catering i honestly have to go and get some food and um, he just said like that it's really really hard to explain when you've been on a tour bus for 18 months when there's been tour manager telling you every day where to go, what to do, what time to wake up, like there's everything has been handled for you for 18 months in a row, but you just can't like act in a normal life anymore. It takes like adjusting for days and weeks to do it. I heard Le Guilly, the, the artist, she just, uh, I think I wrote, uh, read that she just decorated her apartment as a hotel room <laughs> because yeah, then she always feels home. I, I think it's, um, no Sleep Till Hammersmith is a uh, Motorhead uh, live album. And I think it's a very good uh, mentioning Motorhead here. And and I think uh, we should all look into the... Everybody who wants to go on a tour should look this uh, document about Lemmy. I think it came like three or four years ago or something. It's fantastic. And if you look at it, you kind of actually see very little of all this kind of rock and roll uh, lifestyle there. You just see like guys who've been doing the rock and roll lifestyle earlier, but they are building everything on this kind of like a long-term friendship. And I think for me, this uh, gives this Motorhead and Lemmy a whole new kind of level, because it seems like just a bunch of friends who are on tour, and, 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 I, and I just love that. Uh, we've been making this, uh, even that KXP is kind of very far from Motorhead, we've been kind of taking Motorhead almost like some kind of, uh, it's like our our uh, guide. It's, also on the drinking it's like level. a religion almost. Also the drinking level? Or? No, 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 no. We are there. So it, KXP is a funny band. Their original lineup, nobody was drinking. And and now it's like uh, two guys are not drinking. But we are not, we are encouraging everybody to get absolutely so hammered as they want to be. So it's not like we are Christian Democrats on the road. And, <laughs> and you know, I think it's. Uh, you know, everybody can do what they want, but just that this Motorhead reference, watching this uh, document and looking at how the Motorhead crew is working, I think is, is a very good lesson. And it's, uh, I remember one of, one of my artist's wife once said that you are actually going all over the world with your best friends and you're partying with your best friends all over the world and you will get paid for it. And I think that's maybe the best part of the touring. But Tuomo, what is actually the best part of the touring? What is the best thing? Well, of course, the, the one hour 
of the 24, like being on stage. That's the, that's the best thing. But I, I do have to say that I really love just sitting in the bus and uh, chatting, chatting with the guys and, uh, you know, being together with that family. It's, it's, it's really important. And uh, I don't know when it ends at some point, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Yeah, I was making uh, three notes here. Um, the first one was uh, build on friendship, uh, that I think is important. And then what you said that the one hour, if the one hour show that you're going to do daily doesn't satisfy you artistically or mentally and it doesn't stimulate you, I think you just quit immediately because it, it's the only thing, some, there's, there's weeks that this is the only thing that you kind of get satisfaction out of, really. And if it doesn't deliver, then, then that is a big problem, I think. Yes, I think the most uh, the challenging uh, thing is uh, all this uh, so-called difficult situation when you go to the venue, you uh, meet new people, you do the sound check, and then finally you see your audience and uh, and to see their their reaction and to be every night in front of the new audience. For example, in Estonia, uh, when we give concerts, people uh, uh, already know us here, and uh, it's a different feeling. They have some expe expectations, but now on the tour, you have to go every time to the new people and. Uh, Prove yourself mm. in a not in a bad way, but in a good way again, and that keeps you very fresh. I feel so. Of course, the concert and morning runs in different cities. I love that. <laughs> Jogging, <laughs> I run. You know, healthy thing, you know, sports. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry, I, I mean, I heard crunch, so I was like, <laughs> mo morning crunch. <laughs> I, I, I'm with you on that. I've been, um, I've been doing yoga on tour every day on my hotel room. I always have to mat with me. It's a little bit nerdy and, you know, maybe boring, but it's just... Because okay, KXP is like, you're always like bending over and on a, like, you know, hunchback kind of position playing and uh, it, you need to stretch, open up a little bit, otherwise yeah, you, sit you in the car. end up like a question mark, you know, like... <laughs> like <this guy> <laughs> <laughs> How about Andreas, what is the best part of the touring? Well, the things have already been said, but yeah, but going with your friends and, and also getting friends uh, and, uh, you know, because again, you're coming back to places. So I always see it like it's... You have some friends in each country that you see, like it's a friend you see at least one time every year. That's maybe I'm not good at having friendships, but that's my favorite kind of friendship. Yeah, it's it, it's, it's good. been that. Yeah, I think also it's like a school in a way. You you kind of if you if you're on a tour, you meet everybody that you need to meet. You need you see the clubs, you see the people, you see how it's done, mm. you you see the whole thing, and you can use this in the future for for any kind of use. It's like it's like you get you go to the best places and. And uh, I think this is also very important that, that if you have a creative mind, you can see how the whole system works, and 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 you can you can you can build the whole whole you know structure in your head. And I think it's very interesting the whole whole uh, network. It's true. It's really it's an education, you know. And I, I understand why I've, when a lot of musicians give up, you know, they become they can really get some interesting jobs afterwards because the experience and commu communication wise is, is so you have to be so diverse yeah yeah basically all of you have technicians agents or managements and labels and you basically have like touring party and teams behind you if you could hire one more person to do something to help you or in any way make it easier for you who would that be? I think we already have too many people in our crew, so I think I'll kick someone out to tonight. But <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, who would I kick out? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, well, we use a lot of money to our big crew. We are, I think we like the comfort too much nowadays, and we have four guys in the crew. And uh, yeah, giving up them is it's it's impossible. Like when you gain that level. It sometimes it would be better to have a little less, you know, costs 
get more money in the pocket, but uh, you know, giving up that comfort level is it's, it's impossible at, with, with, with these kilometers behind. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't hire anyone. God, no. <laughs> uh, I think in generally, uh, I have actually been thinking and uh, in two weeks I will do that. Probably an hire an assistant who will uh, just uh, keep updated all the web stuff and uh, answers uh, to the offers and so on, so on. Uh, but on the tour, I would like to have someone who will, uh, who would carry things, heavy things on the stage. Um, Someone? <laughs> we've been having, uh, when we've been playing in London, there's a good friend who is having a nice uh, Mercedes-Benz uh, splitter van and uh, he's, um, he's like a touring veteran guy and um, and to have like a driver and a tour manager who knows the territory and the, and the you know, English roads and, you know, it, that, that has been a, a fantastic help to have. And, and uh, yeah, I would definitely hire a good tour manager and slash driver if I would have to. And, and it's also very good, I think, because you end up in a tour, you get end up in these situations that like some bands are playing too long or then you have like uh, festival changeovers and stuff. They are usually working quite well, but in showcases and stuff like bands uh, stay on the stage and they start to put slowly their cables like this and stuff. And, and, and uh, you know what I mean, that like packing the, you know, strapping the cable and, yeah, yeah. and you know, daydreaming and, you know, you need somebody sometimes, and I'm, I'm strongly putting the emphasis on the being really friendly and really kind, but somebody sometimes has to say something nasty to somebody, and it's always the best that it's not the band who is doing that. A whip? Yeah, a whip, a proper whip. Yeah. Well, for m m as I said earlier, most of the time we are just the three of us in the bands, we do everything ourselves on tour, so, and, Again, you get really good experience on you know talking with people and and relating to every sound engineer you meet and and making it work. Uh, and over the years, we also like you know we built we want to make we want to make this list about all the people like all from sound engineers or uh, light guys and stuff like that that we that we meet all the places that we like to work with because then we could maybe I don't know if it would be too stressful but then we could like. Every new country, we have a new sound engineer, and it's you know, cost-wise, that would be good. Uh, but for me, I think as also a driver uh, slash tour manager, because yeah, you, when you're in the van, you actually just want to turn your head off, you know, and that's how I feel. So uh, that's that would really take some pressure off. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also actually quite dangerous. We just talked about it earlier, like having long drives, do the show, do interviews, meet the fans, handle the merchandise, everything. Basically, you end up working 16 hours per day, and then you might even need to drive to another city again. And it really gets dangerous at some point. But there's no other way to do it, when, especially if you can't do it financially, if you're building your career. And I think that that's something what we should focus on at some point to make it available or possible for the new upcoming bands. I don't know how to do it. We would need some millions for the world to do it, but it would be nice. But let's talk about a little bit of social medias. That's something what all the artists love always. But it's a crucial part of touring nowadays. It's, uh, it's something what all the promoters, agents, festivals, venues, everybody are following your social medias. A lot of promoters are following like how active you are on social medias, how much you're promoting the shows, and like festivals, festival promoters are also seeing how many likes and followers you have, how actively your fans and you are on social medias. What is your perspective to social medias and and being active there? I think it's like, a, for me, it's a, how do you say, a double 
double-bladed sword, uh, is that the way you say it? Yeah, where you, uh, we use Facebook a lot, you know, and, and also look at the people who go in there and we try to, you know, how, to, how can we expand it and, and how can we get the right people to see that we're coming to this uh, city and playing. But at the same time, we try to, uh, I also play in a pretty dark band, so maybe that's also why, but we, we tried having Instagram, but, Instagram, but that's just not for me. I'm like, I also think sometimes it's really good to share things and it's good to build a good relationship with your, uh, your, um, your followers. But sometimes I also think that uh, you don't need to see everything. I think a lot of bands demystify uh, themselves a bit too much. And I'm not saying that you should wear a cape and not talk with anybody after the show. That's what we do. That's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see the cape. We actually wear a cape, but we talk to people. <laughs> But uh, you should definitely do that. Um, you should never be an asshole. Uh, but I just, I, I, for me, it's also a stressful thing. You know, I, I put a lot of uh, work into doing the, f the Facebook thing when we were on tour and making that work. And the more you have, the more, you know, the more you have to spend time on it. And yeah, yeah I think it's a time consumer. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, the social media is a fantastic tool and a great help. And uh, we've been experimenting a little bit with like paid ads and stuff like that. And I, I can't really tell you how much it has been helping or not helping. Who knows? But it's also really like a territorial thing. I would say that in some parts of like Southern Europe, the meaning of social media is, is, is novel compared to Scandinavia and some other territories, at least in our case. But uh, I would definitely say that um, I come from the era where you were handing out flyers and making posters and that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of the social media and the, the cult of, of, of like personas that's for me super weird. But I try to I try to do it. I try to be part of it, but in our own terms. And and one thing that is it's it's not like a, it's not like a shortcut from A to B. It's kind of evolving together with the whole timeline of your band. So it's not like you can't overcompensate of the thing with social media. I think it's it's a natural progress of your career and the social media together rather than you make like a huge social media thing. At least this is my my opinion. That that you just have to take it easy and understand the timeline of the whole uh, whole process. But is it possible to tour anymore without social medias? Could you, Sandra, imagine going on tour without using any social medias? Obviously, I know the answer is no, because there's no... I can't see any other way. But, like, how do you feel? <laughs> I think uh, I think it's hard. Uh, it's uh, easy uh, if you don't have uh, social media accounts and you go on tour. It's a very easy way to uh, communicate with your fans. I actually, again, I love it. <laughs> and uh, I enjoy doing the social media things because it's uh, challenging for me. It's uh, the way you have a concert yesterday night uh, for, I don't know, 300, 400 people, but you can show uh, thousands of uh, how it was, what it felt like, uh, put up uh, pictures, and everybody can see what it feels like be, uh, to be on your concert. And uh, we actually have uh, so much thing to post that I have uh, written down uh, a checklist that uh, if something runs out, we don't have anymore, then there is like 10 things to post. We make uh, videos and, and stuff that we don't actually, okay, we don't think I have to post it now in 10 minutes, but uh, you do this uh, stuff and it's uh, for us, uh, I feel it, it's... Uh, it's a, like a normal, uh, normal parallel life. <laughs> I don't know. Could it be more female thing? Because I'm like you. I also have a, t I have a huge list of things to post, and I collect like these folders of photos and videos and things like that. When the band is not active or there's not something going on, I have every day tons of things to post and keep active. I don't know if it's. Do we have the is difference the between thing? the? I, is it the female I, I, thing? I enjoy it as well, and I, I do all the things uh, for with our, with our band. But I still think that, uh, and it, again, I'm not saying it's not important. It's super important. But I still think that word by mouth is like the most, because you all yeah. know that you go you go through the Facebook thing, you don't see anything of it. You know, you you, no, you, no. you know you, you're tired of seeing people writing the same stuff, and you know. 
if you get if if a friend comes to me and and say you should really check out this band, I'm gonna listen to him more than some yeah. Facebook posts. So, but again, you also generate word by mouth by using the the yeah. social media. So, yeah. Yeah, maybe it's a female and a heavy metal thing, but <laughs> we we do it a lot, and we love it, and uh, we we use all the. Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Snapchat, and whatever, whatnot, and uh, for us, it's really, really important way to communicate with the fans, and it's part of our band brand, if you can brand, if you can use that word, like to be very talkative and uh, be in, in close contact with your fans. So. Uh, very important, and later we'll be doing this uh, like live broadcasting with Facebook mentions, so it's almost like a online live uh, broadcasting all the time. So <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. But you basically you see it as a part of your job as yes. performing to keep up with the fans and social yes, media. Definitely, like when you keep your channel alive and uh, people like to hang out there, then it's really kind of uh, easy to also promote your gigs or whatever. If you do a lot of interesting uh, content there, then it's okay to drop in like a commercial break here and there, and it's it's it doesn't stink then. Yeah, yeah I think content. No, no, no. That's why you content, have to do the funny con- stuff as well. Content is the key, I'd I'd say, but it's also very distorted, and I I don't know if there's some proxy or some kind of like a system how, but sometimes it feels that you post one picture and you get like. 100 likes and then you post a link that oh here's a new song that you can listen and you get like 75 likes and you're like what's the point you know in a way like it's almost like it doesn't matter you take one picture of a dog with the funny tail and you put it out on the internet and it gets more likes than you your just use song the picture with the song you know so that's why you get yeah but yeah. then probably there's some kind of parameter that is blocking the that half of the user your fans don't see it or something i think it's like uh, it's a swamp, and I'm, I mean, I honestly can't stand the person like uh, how it's like lifting like uh, personas. I think that for me is a scary like uh, thing to notice. Like selfie is a scary thing. <laughs> 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 but um, if you guys perform as your as your job and as living. How nervous, anxious you get still before every single show? How stressful it is to perform every evening? Do you actually get get a lot of stress um, thinking about how much audience there will be tonight? Like, are you actively thinking about it like that? How many people will show up? And like, and I need to be my i need to do my best no matter how many pe- people will show up and like how in what condition i am like how stressful it is i don't know for me it's uh, if there's five people i get uh, you know I've, i get angry and then i play a better show uh, so <laughs> no I'm, I'm saying sometimes it's also good with the you know that it's not going so well but but of course you want people to come but what you asked me was if you get stressed out by and not Sometimes when it's an important show, but I think like you're getting stressed out all through the you know all the other things you have to do, and then when you play, you're doing the thing you know what to do and you know well you're good at hopefully. Uh, so it's no, it's not. So what about Tuomo? Like you, you guys are quite big. You know every evening that there will be a lot of people, and. People will show up and come and see your show. I don't know. Is there any difference? Well, I'm the guy who's always afraid that no one will show up, even if it's like you know, it, it usually happens. But I'm afraid every time and being stressed about it. like maybe this is the the gig that things stop working. <laughs> okay, now they have forgotten about our band, so I'm kind of afraid of that every night. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm stressing that, but. But not that much the the gig itself like anymore. It's not like that exciting anymore, or it's different. It's kind of I get silent and I kind of uh, just uh, go deep in my own thoughts and in that way. But I wouldn't say it's stressful. But yeah, stressing about ticket sales and uh, sales usually it's uh, just go goes on. I was saying something else, but I forgot. I think stressful part for me is actually after the show. 
uh, I start to overthink that what I did or what I said, uh, but not not on the stage or before. And it doesn't matter how many people uh, there are. But uh, we have figured out with our band that if everything goes good on timing and we have perfect sound check and there is no uh, uh, no uh, like wrong cables <laughs> attached and so on so on, then we do a very boring show. <laughs> then we are so confident, we go on the stage, we know everything works, and we are quite boring. But if there is a really stressful on the sound check, like we had in uh, Kazakhstan, we were playing, uh, there was 5,000 people, and then the, the leader of the festival, uh, he said, okay, you have to make a changeover in one minute. We're, but uh, that's not possible. Uh, yeah, you have to do, otherwise you can't go on the stage. But that's not possible, we have to get ready, and there was a lot of problems with cables, and then I said, okay, we go and uh, we do it, and when we are ready, we start. No, 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 you have one minute. And then I said, okay, we don't go then. And then I was like, uh, and he got really stressful, starting yelling at me, and I was yelling at him, and then at the same time, guys already went to put the stuff up. <laughs> and uh, then we went on the stage, and um, we put a loop on that starts uh, a sample, and we were already like, yeah, yeah, and we were looking like, but 5,000 people, they didn't even, even move. They were like this. And then we understand that nothing comes from the speakers. <laughs> but we were already, yeah! <laughs> so it took like 10 minutes. And, and, but it was a great, uh, great show after that because we were so pissed off uh, at the festival director. But now they asked us back this year. <laughs> I think uh, about the ticket sales. Uh, when it, on the moment when it becomes personal, then it's time to stress about it. And, um, I think bands, at least I try to do everything that is in my power to get people to come on the shows. Because it's, um, if you're doing like a small headline show, like a tour of like two weeks in Europe and stuff like that, it, you, you want it to look good that there's people there and everybody's happy because there's lots of like, there's the club and they have expenses and then they're usually the promoter is taking a personal risk to put your band on. And there's some like fixed fee and stuff like that, and if he doesn't get his, he will go to minus. And what kind of uh, promoter will book you again if, if he done the minus before with you? So maybe he believes in a long-term thing. So I take it personally that I get people to come on the shows, and I put the social media, even that I don't like it, I will push it, and you know I will do that every kind of thing that I can do to do it. Am I nervous before the show? Always horrified. You don't get used to it? <laughs> no, I get used to it, but it's just the respect of the situations. And there's so many variables that are changing. You know, technical things, the sound thing, everything can be like a disaster. And then when you have there, like, you are like, smoke is coming out and the strobe lights and the visuals, and you go like, and nothing happens, you know, it's like. <laughs> but it's basically like Sandra said, it's also, it's your fuel. Yeah, what yeah. makes you going? Is it a fuel for you? Definitely. Like if if you, I think also if you're like a how do you say a turtle kind of person who, when you get resistance, you move into a shell. You probably shouldn't be touring uh, because you you get, you know, you get, um, you know, you 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 run into problems, and if you can't uh, turn them around and use them as fuel, you you know, it's going to be really difficult. It's a Big fuel for me. Actually, it's such a big fuel that sometimes, in some of the countries where we do really well and 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 we fill out like a big, really big venue, then I'm like, so I have nothing to be mad about. That <laughs> like because you you're always working and trying to get people there and you you you've been touring for so long and then when you're like there, it's like, and then you have to actually l learn yourself how to enjoy it. <laughs> well, I should. I was like, yeah, but you. This is what it's about. This is what you. This is where you were going for, but it's weird, yeah. I have this thing that I used to be like that, that when I was playing and I made one mistake that I was putting on a wrong channel of a mixer or a sampler or I make a, like a wrong note with the guitar and stuff, I would totally lose the last of the show. I couldn't get over it. It was like for me, like absolute stupidity and, and how could I make this stupid mistake? But nowadays, I do it so that I make the same mistake again. <laughs> and I kind of own it. <laughs> so I make the same mistake again, and then I'm getting over it, and then I can continue with the good show. 
But mistakes are really good sometimes. So yeah, for me, you it's do like them it, it, twice. It's like yeah. <laughs> I do them twice. Yeah, sometimes it, that can also be a thing like uh, that uh, yeah, gets you cooking in a way. Yeah. But we have now uh, one minute left. Do you guys have any questions for these four amazing talents? <laughs> hello, hello. Um, when you start the tour, probably some fundament will be like some big festival or festivals. But uh, what about like your strategies of? Uh, uh, filling up the caps between the big things, you know. If you, for example, with a bus going to a region, <coughs> just a strategy. Well, it's, uh, f for us it's always been like you have some shows that you know it's going to be a, you know, a success and, and give some money and then you, maybe you have, a, uh, you know, you, you, you fill in some of the other days instead of uh, spending too much money on a hotel or something, you fill in a small show that you know is maybe not going to be, you know, packed, but you got to get all your expenses covered, and then, yeah, you also played one more show. Uh, so that's what we kind of do, yeah. I think it's important to know when to start touring, and I think uh, the first tours always will be quite uh, difficult, but the timing to... Okay, when will I start? When when is the demand so that it's it's smart to go into the tour? I think somebody has to evaluate that and and see the offers and. It depends also where where you want to play. If you are uh, willing to play in uh, also if you have a free day, willing to play in a small club for uh, ten people, we always have this attitude that we rather play play than uh, sit in a hotel so we can uh, practice new things or whatever. And we played in uh, we had one uh, evening off uh, where um, we played in uh, Lithuania and there was only seven people I think, but the venue was like for five hundred. Uh, it's a new new place uh, somewhere outside of Vilnius. And then the owner offered us uh, that he will. Play pay us half of the money if we don't pay, play. <laughs> and we were, no, 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 we will play. <laughs> and uh, and then for, uh, for uh, us, it's uh, our agent looks over the free days and then uh, she knows some venues or starts to contact the local, uh, local people and uh, where to play, even though if you don't get uh, money from there. And, yeah. I think there was another question there. Yeah, um, I was just wondering like, uh, because you have a, like a booking agent uh, uh, manager or uh, somebody doing the press, like if there's any uh, ever any conflicts that you know everybody is like mixing the same soup and uh, sort of like there's a mess because of people have different visions that where the overall what would be the overall direction. Well, I would say that the whole thing is a big mess. Yeah. <laughs> that there's there's like it's like a chaotic thing, but you have to start to operate in the chaos. But I it's not like maybe I'm exaggerating, but but I I think there's always the element of like things are changing and moving and and uh, planning is sometimes really hard. It gets probably easier or harder the bigger you get. But if you're like a, like a lower to mid-sized band where we are operating, for example, um, I think it's. The, the routing of the tour can be really difficult. And I think also it's like you you have to pick your territory where you're operating because it doesn't make any sense that you're playing absolutely everywhere. You have to a little bit like focus on on some countries where you have some natural like things happening already. I would say things are, there's always lots of people in the soup. Do we still have any other questions? Um, this is more like a comment for Timo about Facebook content. And it's actually forbidden to post like advertise, advertisements on your page. So everything you do should be about something else. So uh, whenever you post <laughs> something commercial, it should be an advertise, advertisement. So it use, like, every time you post like a flyer of your show, it should be a paid ad. Yeah, exactly. And that sucks. But if you post like commercial stuff on your page, Facebook will punish you for that. And, and will, it will not show as much of your content to your yeah, page. I've been feeling people. the punishment. 
you don't so. get an email. <laughs> That's like, you know, nobody tells you. Anyway, you should know. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, if there's no more questions, I thank you all. I thank Tuomo, Sandra, Timo and, and Andreas. Thank you for coming. <laughs> and have a nice day.